God has done for us, let us join our voices together in our morning's call to worship using the words printed in your bulletin. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. I invite you now to stand as you are able and join together in singing our opening hymn of the morning. Hymn 457, I greet thee who my sure redeemer art. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our Creator, who made the heavens and the earth, we are your children, and we are in awe of all you have made. Christ, the Son, our Redeemer and Savior, you lived and died for us all you live again and have prepared the way for us. Holy Spirit, the sustainer, you move in us and among us. We follow your wisdom and feel your presence. Holy triune God, help us to know you more fully, 
and guide us this day in this time of worship. We pray in the name of the one who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us your sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to greet those sitting around you with the peace of Christ. Good morning. Welcome to Buford Presbyterian Church on this, the Lord's Day. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. I know that a number of us are traveling this weekend for uh, various reasons, and of course we wish traveling mercies on all those who can't be with us today, uh, but I am so happy that you are with us as we seek together God's presence in our lives. Hey, Miller. Give me five. All right. Peace be with you. Um, announcements, as always, are in the insert in your bulletin. Um, a few things that I want to lift up. One is that today is the last day for a while that we will be worshiping at 11 o'clock or at 8.30 for that matter. We're moving to one service starting next week. It's at 10 a.m. Um, and we'll do that for June and July. So. Uh, you'll get to spend some time getting to know all those 830 people that maybe you didn't even know they were still part of the church, and they'll get to know you too. Um, but our new summer schedule starts next week, 10 a.m. Um, here. Uh, along with that, a, a lot of our Sunday school classes, I think all of our Sunday school classes have, are taking off for the summer. Uh, we will get back started on the church year around the second week in August, I believe. And um, so uh, I think it's uh, the church uh, needs to have rhythms of, of work and rest, and um, the summer is a good time for us to, to kind of slow down a little bit and, and have a different rhythm to our lives together. VBS is coming up, so summer isn't empty. There's a lot going on. VBS starts next week. Um, we have over 90 kids signed up, so it should be a, a great group of people coming in. We need adult volunteers. So Carrie was telling me, we've got a lot of youth uh, volunteers ready to come, and we have some volunteers from, as preschool parents, but we don't have many adult uh, church member volunteers. We've only got about 10. So I wanna ask you, if you're an adult and you're a member of this church, um, don't ask yourself, do I want to do this? Ask yourself, do I have the time and can I do this? Um, we could certainly use more help for Vacation Bible, Bible School, which is uh, coming up, up really quickly. While we're on the subject of volunteers, if you are an adult male in the congregation, say to yourself, I'm an adult male. Um, you have passed the first, uh, <laughs> you've passed the first bar. We need uh, an, a volunteer to go with our youth on the, uh, the mission trip in July, July 14th through 19th. We need an adult male. If we don't have an adult male, we won't be able to do the trip. So uh, again, uh, look deep in your heart and, and see if maybe you are being called to go have fun and, and help um, our youth be part of this mission trip. Um, think strongly about that. Uh, and please talk to Carrie if you're feeling called to do that. Finally, uh, tomorrow is 
Memorial Day, as we all know, and um, it's a day for us to remember those who have died in service to our country um, or to our communities. And so I know that most of us, many of us, know somebody who has died in service. And I want to give us an opportunity right now to, to think of the people you know who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to give God thanks for their lives and to say a prayer of peace for their families who I know are proud but also are having a hard time this week uh, missing their loved ones. So we'll have a moment of silence before we continue on with the rest of the service. Let us continue to worship God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and in faith, let us confess our sins together. Lord of light, enter our past. Dispel the works of darkness, destroy the deeds of evil, defeat the thoughts of disgrace. Enter the recording room of our memories, enter the dark room of guilt and shame, enter the secret room of sins hidden and forgotten. Come, Lord of light, and forgive. Come, Lord of light, and set us free. Come and scatter our darkness. Come draw us closer to you. <coughs> Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that we are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God and amen. be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite our children forward for our children's sermon this morning with Sue Dunbar. Come on, Miller. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope y'all are doing good today, and I'm so glad to see y'all. This is a beautiful day, and we're here to learn about God. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what Pastor Davis is going to talk about, about the Holy Spirit. Uh, we have in the Bible, uh, in Acts, uh, the Bible telling us about the Holy Spirit and there was this man named Apostle Paul. I don't know if any of you have heard of Apostle Paul, 
but he was a wonderful, godly, holy man. And he had the Holy Spirit in his heart. And he went around all over preaching in Europe, in Asia, in different places. And what was he preaching about? He was a preaching about who do we believe in? Jesus. He was trying to tell everybody about Jesus. And one day someone said he needed to go to Macedonia, that there was this man that needed him. So the Holy Spirit was leading him to go to Macedonia to see what this man wanted. And as he got there, he found out what he wanted. And then he happened down by the river, and there was a lady with the other people who his name was Lydia, and she was selling purple cloth. And so she wanted to find out about Jesus. Thank you, Noah. Thank you. Just, can you listen there? Yeah, sit down right there. So anyway, he, was, he, he found out that Lydia wanted to know more about Jesus and more about God. You know what? She felt like that in her heart, she could not be as Christian as she wanted to be, or she felt like something was mis missing. And she, even though she was uh, having the Holy Spirit, she still kind of felt like that she was missing something and wasn't being able to hear what God was telling her. You know what she did? She was baptized by Paul. And we have Pastor Davis and Pastor Carrie that baptizes us. And when we are baptized, then we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we repent of our sins. And we want to do what's right. We want to do what God wants us to do. You know, it's hard for us to always do what God wants us to do. Uh, as children, as teachers, as adults, it's just hard to follow. But when we are thinking about God, when we're thinking about the Holy Spirit, then we're asking God to please have the Holy Spirit come into our lives and help us try to do the right thing. So this is what Lydia did and her friends. And from that, other people repented and they believed. And I think maybe a church was started at that time because of that. So we're very grateful for the Apostle Paul. We're grateful for Lydia. We're grateful for other people who have been in, had things that happened in the past that helps us with what we're doing in the church today. We are baptized now because of what happened years and years and years ago through the life of Jesus and after Jesus died and was on the cross and then went to heaven. So if there's anything that you can remember, please remember that we can always ask Jesus and God to help us in our lives, especially when we come across things that are hard for us to do or we don't quite know what to do or we need an answer. Who do we go to? We go to Jesus. That's right. Can we have a word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we know it's not always easy to come to you, but help us to know that you're always there wanting to be with us, wanting to guide us, wanting to uh, help us to do the right thing. Help these boys and girls to always know that and help us to always look to you for everything that we knew, do. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Thank you. Have a good week. Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, we praise you and give thanks that you have called us to be your people. We give thanks for your love that is revealed in the life and death of Jesus, for your power that is seen in his resurrection, 
and for your majesty that's made known by his ascension into heaven to be at your side. Help us, O oh God, to always keep your power and authority, your love and your majesty in our minds, to never neglect the doing of your will. Help us to be obedient to the word you place in our hearts and our minds. Father and mother of us all, we believe that Christ Jesus should rule within our worship and our life together as your people. We believe too that he should rule over our work in the world and within our family life. Indeed, we profess that he wants to be Lord of our lives, the one who is supreme in deciding how we should relate to our friends and to our neighbors. Help us to make this manifest in what we do each and every day and how we make decisions about how we'll spend our time and our money and how we will employ our hands and in how we will direct our feet, how we will speak and think and how we will rest and work. O oh God, in his time with us, Christ has shown authority over wind and wave. We pray that he may bring peace and calm to those whose lives are troubled. Peace to those preparing for procedures and surgery. Peace to those awaiting tests from doctors. And peace to those grieving the loss of loved ones. We lift our prayers beyond ourselves this day and continue to pray, O oh God, for our world, for our local, state, national, and world leaders, we pray. Give them wisdom. Help to guide them in your ways of peace and justice. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Cameroon, for those especially undergoing threats persecution, and even death. We pray for their family members here as they worry. God, we ask that you continue to give them a sense of your peace. We pray for our service men and women, past and present, for those who have made sacrifices, and especially this Memorial Day weekend, those who have made the ultimate sacrifice protect our country and our freedoms. Lord, you hear our prayers, those that we speak, but those too that go unspoken. We thank you that you hear our prayers. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. I invite you to listen now for God's word speaking to us this day. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Now let us sing together hymn number 316, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. be seated. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 6 through 15. Give me just a second. Acts 16, 6 through 15. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river. We supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How in the world do any of us know what to do? I mean, a lot of stuff that we already do is sort of obvious. If you have a job, you wake up at a reasonable time in the morning, you go to work, maybe drop the kids off at school. Depending on what your job is, you do a certain kind of work and make decisions based on your training and experience go home, eat supper, go to bed. That's pretty easy. 
But how do you decide what to do when things aren't laid out like that? When an ethical dilemma arises at school or at work and your training doesn't provide a simple answer, what if you don't have a job? How do you decide what to do with your time? You could volunteer at a soup kitchen. You could rob a bank. How do you decide what to do with your time? When do you do this or that and why? Most of the time you don't have to think about the answers to these questions. You just play out the patterns that you've already established but then there are moments when you're challenged to decide what is right for you and what is wrong. Or maybe you know what's right, but then there's the other question. When is the right time? Take, for example, our hero, Paul. Most of Acts is the story of how the Apostle Paul spread the gospel of Jesus all over the Roman world. Paul's letters corroborate his missionary zeal because they indicate that Paul has built relationships all over the Mediterranean countryside. Paul is a leader in the early church, and not just any leader, but arguably the most important figure in early Christianity, aside from Jesus himself. And this is kind of odd because Paul never met Jesus. There are all these people who lived and walked with Jesus every day for years, but it's Paul who takes on the greatest missionary and leadership role. It doesn't make sense. It should be Peter or Mary Magdalene or someone who walked with Jesus writing letters to the churches all over the Roman Empire. So what are Paul's qualifications? Well, he is a trained rhetorician who knows how to craft a letter or speech for ultimate effect. Peter and the other fishermen turned apostles probably did not. He was a devoted Pharisee. He knows the Bible backward and forward and all the details of how to be orthodox. He knows how to speak in the synagogue and how to use the scriptures to witness to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. These are all important elements of what makes Paul the perfect evangelist. But the thing that actually makes Paul, I think, the most successful in ministry, the thing that makes Paul such a great leader of the early church, is actually his ability to follow. More specifically, his ability to look and listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit and then the boldness to actually follow that leading. Our scripture reading this morning is a perfect example. It opens on the Holy Spirit telling Paul where not to go. Having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia, it says, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to do that either. So we hear right off about the Holy Spirit denying Paul and his entourage to go in certain directions. And even though this part of the story gets passed over without much focus, it is very important. The ability to hear and follow when the Holy Spirit shows us what not to do or where not to go is crucial. As elementary as this sounds, you can kind of think of the Holy Spirit as that angel on your shoulder, the kind that in those cartoons argues with the little devil on the other shoulder. The Holy Spirit is God's movement in the world. The Holy Spirit whispers yeses and noes to our soul. Sometimes it's clearer than others. In this case, the Spirit is telling Paul, no, your ministry isn't meant to come this way to Asia and Bithynia. That isn't to say the church won't make it there or isn't needed there. It's just to say that the Holy Spirit doesn't intend these places for Paul yet. It can be hard for us to know where not to go, what not to do. Sometimes, especially hard as a church, 
There are loads of great ministries that we could do or get involved with, but not everything is right for you or for the church. A lot of churches these days are learning to listen to the Holy Spirit about old ministries that used to be right, but then we've outgrown or maybe undergrown them. And how do we end something that used to be right for us, but maybe isn't anymore? How do we know when a good ministry isn't really our ministry? Listening to the Holy Spirit for where not to go is a vital skill. So much energy can be lost on good-natured work in the wrong direction. But I don't want to dwell anymore on the Holy Spirit's no, because Paul finally gets a yes. He has a vision of a man from Macedonia who pleads with Paul to come help him. Paul judges that this is the leading of the Holy Spirit, and he decides to heed his vision, and the gang all sail to Philippi in Macedonia. You heard the rest of the story. In Philippi, Paul and his team set up next to the river. Lydia hears the word, follows the leading of the Holy Spirit in her own life, and becomes the first convert of a true Roman city. Her household is baptized, and we can assume that the Philippian church begins in her home. Since Lydia is a dealer in purple cloth, she probably has the finances to help support the fledgling church in Philippi. All this because Paul followed, because Paul was in the right place at the right time, saying the right things. And then Lydia takes the baton from Paul because she knows how to follow the Holy Spirit too. Both leaders who know how to follow the leader. I want you to see in this story a ministry that knows how to listen to and follow the Holy Spirit. It's the difference between a church that spins its wheels doing things that nobody really feels called or energy to do and a church that engages in vital ministry in the community and in the world. But there is a crucial element in here that's easy to miss if we aren't paying attention. Remember when Paul had a vision, he had a vision of a man asking for help. The vision of this man is why Paul goes to Macedonia. What he finds is a woman who becomes willing and able to offer Paul help. This, in my mind, is the key to the story and is part of God's great joke to the faithful. That is, that when you are following the Holy Spirit, things won't necessarily turn out the way you expected. We see this time and again in the person of Jesus, that the Messiah isn't what you expect, that salvation isn't what you think it's going to be, that death isn't as strong as we always thought it was. Macedonia isn't what Paul was expecting, I think, when he went looking for the man in his vision. But in that moment, Lydia becomes the mission, and Paul's ministry doesn't miss a beat. What does this look like in our lives? What plans are we working on? How do you listen for those things that may not be on the bullet list of the plan, but might be what God is calling us to pay attention to? These are the questions that Paul and Lydia confront us with this morning. Where is God trying to do something that maybe we didn't expect in our lives? Maybe something that we didn't even imagine. These are, of course, the same questions that we as a church have to ask too. This church might be headed towards something that it has never been before. Like I told the graduates last week, we don't have to know what that is to start moving forward. We do have to faithfully trust the Holy Spirit is guiding us, though. There is a reason that Buford Presbyterian Church is here. And if we can catch the wind of the Holy Spirit in our sails, 
If the members of this church are people who seek to follow the nudges and visions and calls of the Holy Spirit, then our story will be part of the story of God's kingdom coming into the world. And that will be such good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, having heard the word, read and proclaimed, let the church state what we believe using the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. Please stand with me. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we are about to collect the offering, I hope you feel the nudge of the Holy Spirit right now. And I mean that seriously, not only for what you are giving to the church or what you maybe have already decided to give to the church, but also I find this is a great time to spend time in prayer, to think about ways that we can give our time and energy and give our hearts back to God as well. So as we present our gifts this morning, I also hope that we will spend time in prayer presenting ourselves before God and listening for where the Holy Spirit is nudging us to go next. Let us, with gratitude and joy, present our gifts before the Lord.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we know that all we have and all we are belong to you already. It is with faith like children who borrow money from their parents to buy them a gift that we give these gifts of money and the gift of ourselves back to you. We give with joy and thanksgiving. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 538, Lord Dismiss Us With Thy Blessing. invitation, as always, is twofold. For those of you who are visiting with us today and maybe searching for a new church home, we invite you to find a home here with us as we seek to be God's faithful people following the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And for those who are members here, maybe even longtime members, I invite you this day as well to remember that God is still moving in your life that the Holy Spirit is still nudging you and pulling you to new and deeper forms of discipleship. And if you would like to talk about what that might look like, I invite you to have a conversation either with me or with Pastor Kerry, or better yet, with another church member, so you can talk together about what God is doing in your lives. In any case, as you go out into the world, go carrying the love of Christ to everyone you meet, by word and by deed. And go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.